Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Today's episode is provided by Radio Archives, who sell fine old-time radio collections in high-quality audio, classic pulp ebooks, as well as pulp audiobooks. And you can send an email to detectives at radioarchives.com to get a free sample of each of their products. They also have a subscription service where they are releasing the entirety of all of the discs that they've transcribed over the years in a digital format with 600 files every month for your listening pleasure. Listeners to the great detectives of old time radio can try the first month for only $59.98, which goes directly to uh, me to support the podcast. And if you like what you hear, you can subscribe for $60 per month, which is half off the normal price. So you can try that out at transfers.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of File of Ants. And this episode from Radio Archives is one where there was just not a good enough quality program in circulation to play, but uh, their version definitely worked for us. So we can enjoy this episode. Original air date, September 20th, 1949. And this one is the Penny Ante Murder Case. <laughs> How many cards, Dan? Uh, uh, none for me, Bill. No, 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 not at all. I'll play these. What are you so nervous about, Dan? You got a pat hand. You ought to relax. Right, Jacqueline? Maybe Dan's got something on his mind. Could be. Make with the cards, Bill. How many are you taking? Dealer takes two cards. You bet, Jacqueline. I checked to Dan's pat hand. Oh, uh, who's that? Relax, Dan. I don't know who it is, but I'll handle it. Who's there? We're the police. What? Open up in there. The police. Keep your nerves under control, will you, Dan, for Pete's sake? What do we do, Bill? Okay, they don't open up. We break in. All right, now, nobody move. What's, What's the, the meaning idea? of this? We're having a little friendly game of poker in my apartment. We're playing for pennies. You can see for yourself. We'll look around. Got your nerve. got a complaint from the neighbors that there's been gambling going on here. We... Hey, what's this? Dan's dead. Dan's been stabbed. No wonder he was nervous. Looks like you three people took time out from the game to do a little playing with knives. What? This guy's dead. He was a big guy. He was just sitting here. Well, who was he? His name was Dan Smith. He was alive a minute ago. That's all I know. Anybody see this guy stabbed? You, lady? No. No, I didn't. What about you? I didn't see a thing. Not a thing. Hey, look, officer, I had nothing to do with this. You've got to believe me. Do I? Yeah. We'll see. Okay, boys, trot the three of them down to headquarters. Now, wait a minute. Murphy, you stick with me. Hold on. Rest of you out. Go on, boys, get them out. Well, Murph, this is what I like about being a cop. You get a call saying there's gambling up here and we find a murder. Well, at least we know one of the other three killed him. That's something. That's right. Yeah, I want to take a look at the hand this dead guy was holding. Might mean something. Cards face down on the table. I think I'll take a look. There. Three aces. He held three aces, Sergeant Heath. Yeah, so I see. The only ace missing was the ace of spades. And some guys think the ace of spades is unlucky. Yeah. Well, somebody wasn't superstitious, I guess. <laughs> I'm the district attorney, not the judge, Miss Rice. I'm not going to doubt your guilt or innocence. 
I'm only interested in finding out what happened at the game. You know what happened, Mr. Markham. We were playing poker for pennies just to pass time when the police broke down the door. In the excitement, Dan Smith was stabbed. What do you know about Smith? Not a thing. Bill Baxter, it was his apartment we were playing in, invited him to play. Baxter and Ricky Mollis and the other man in the game were in business together. And you? I just like to play cards. I see. I've asked my friend Philo Vance to come down here and meet you as the first step in finding out which of you three murdered Smith. Vance, eh? Yes. You think he'll like what he sees when he meets me? When Vance is on a case, he isn't easily distracted. Oh, I don't know. You'll find out. You're very attractive, Miss Rice. Tall, excellently dressed, quite glamorous, I'd say. <laughs> Maybe we can do without Vance on this case. Uh, <clears throat> I think not. I'll amend what I said, though. Oh? Your entire appearance, including those dark glasses you wear, your obviously expensive gown and mink jacket will affect Vance. He won't be distracted, mind you, just disturbed. Well, that's something, at least. Markham, I won't be held very long, will I? I can't make any promises. It's possible it's... Good evening. Oh, Vance, come in. This is Miss Jacqueline Rice. Miss Rice, Philo Vance. How do you do? <laughs> Hello, Vance, Mr. you Vance. know why I asked you to come down? Definitely. Although your meager information hasn't supplied me with any motive for the crime. We haven't found any ourselves yet. Don't even know who the dead man was, as a matter of fact. We know his name, Dan Smith, and that's all. It occurred to me on the way here that the poker game might have been the reason for his murder. We were playing for pennies, Van. Sergeant Heath, who broke into the apartment, can tell you that. He told Markham, and Markham told me, which is the same thing. But while pennies were used, they may only have been used as an indicator. Like a chip, for instance. In other words, each penny might have represented ten dollars. Or fifty, or a hundred. That's right, isn't it, Miss Rice? Yes, it might have. And if Dan Smith were winning and somebody couldn't afford to lose... How were you doing in the game, Miss Rice? I was losing, up until the hand that was interrupted. And that one? I would have won that one. I had a straight flush. Mine was the winning hand. A straight flush beats three aces, you know. So it does, and that's what Smith held. Afraid you'll have to find a different angle, Vance. Perhaps, although I doubt it. After I question the other two suspects, Markham, I'd like you to release them. And, uh, Miss Rice. All right, if you say so, Vance. That means it's all right if I go? That's correct, but not too far. Nicely said, Markham. You see, I think Miss Rice has gone far enough already. What a cinch this is. What a wonderful racket. Getting to like myself better with every envelope that comes in here, Ricky. Bill, I'm scared. Because that Dan Smith got knocked off in my apartment? Yeah. I'd be scared the cops let us go, didn't they? They couldn't prove we did it? We didn't. I'll take that remark up with you later, Ricky. Give me a count on today's dough. That envelope you just opened is the last. We got 1,200 letters today. Each with a buck in the envelope. All the envelopes addressed to us, the Rainbow Distributing Company. Not bad. And all we needed to go into business was a telephone book and 20,000 penny postcards. I wish I'd thought of that idea. You're missing the one thing you need to think up ideas, brains. It takes brains, Ricky, to dream up the idea of sending postcards to people in the phone book with a card saying we're holding a package for them and we'll forward it when they send us a buck. It takes brains. All I know is it works. That's all you have to know. What happens when the people send us a buck and then they don't get the packages? Ricky, this racket is only good for a week and then we blow town. But in that week, we ought to get ten grand easy. <laughs> Too bad that Smith guy got knifed in my place. Might make blowing town a little tough. You shouldn't have done it, Ricky. Me? Yeah. Hey, I didn't kill him. Stop it. It wasn't a dame. I was watching her every minute. It was you all right, but forget it. Nobody's going to know that. Hey, you pushed a knife into that Smith guy, Bill, not me. You. Don't look to throw the heat off on me when you kill him. It ain't nice to talk that way, friend. Oh, slug me for no reason. I'm gonna give <laughs> When you get up, Ricky, you're gonna find your right eye is shut. See that in the future you got a mouth to match. Come in. Hello, Vance. You remember me? I remember you all right, Ricky. Come in and sit down. Surprised to see me here, Vince? Not particularly. When I was questioning you yesterday, I knew you were holding something back. Uh, not about the murder, I wasn't. I didn't see who did it, Vance. Honest, I didn't. But about Bill. Bill Baxter, the other guy in the game. I... I work for him, Vance. So you told me yesterday. I didn't know yesterday what I know now. He's got a racket going. He sent out 20,000 postcards to different people saying he was holding a package for him. And to send a buck. A lot of them sent the dollar. Now he figures to scram before they start to gripe. Oh, he does, eh? 
Yeah. And you knew nothing about this when you went to work for him? Not a thing. But we had a little bust up this morning. I know he'll look for some way to make a patsy in this thing. I could go to the cops, but I'd rather come to you. You know better what to do. Perhaps. Tell me something, Ricky. Yeah? Who was Dan Smith, the murdered man? I got no idea. I was in the game for what I could win. I think the dame, Jackie Rice, brought Smith. And I also think my boss, Bill Baxter, was the guy who stuck the knife in him. Did you see him? Well, if I'd have seen him, I'd have told you yesterday. No, I got no proof, Vance, only what I think. Well, that doesn't get us very far, unfortunately. Ricky, I want you to set up a poker game at your apartment tonight. Can you do it? Well, I guess so. I don't know why. I'll have to keep my reasons to myself. I want Bill Baxter there and Jacqueline Rice and yourself. Three-handed poker? That ain't much of a game. There'll be four hands. I'll be there. It's time I took a very definite hand in what's going on around here. Hello? Miss Rice, this is Bill Baxter. What do you want? There's supposed to be a poker game tonight at Ricky's. You going? I don't know why I shouldn't. No? Well, then I got news for you. Philo Vance is going to be there. That's the reason I'm going. Oh. I've got nothing to hide from Vance. What about you, Bill? You going to Ricky's? Yes, I am. I'd like to repeat what you told me. Philo Vance will be there. I got a little repeating to do myself. You tell me you got nothing to hide from Vance. Well, neither have I. That's the reason I'm going to Ricky's. <laughs> This is rather an unhappy card game. Doesn't anybody have anything to say? <laughs> if you want conversation instead of cards, Vance, I could make some tea. I chip two pennies. Anybody playing with me? I'm in. You always were a sucker, Bill. How about you, Ricky? Yeah, I'll stay. Brave man. Vance? I'm not sure. Lend me your dark glasses, will you, Miss Rice? My glasses? Yes, I'd like to use them for a while if you don't mind. The light in this room is so glaring. Oh, I'd lend them to you, Vance, except that they aren't sunglasses. They've been ground to a prescription and then tinted. Oh, may I see them? Well, of course. Here. Anybody feel like playing poker? I got dough invested in that kitty. Just a minute, please, Mr. Baxter. I want to try on these glasses at Miss Rice's. Mm, all right. Hmm. Miss Rice, what was the last thing you asked me before I borrowed these? I asked you if you wanted in on this hand. I chipped two pennies. Yes, of course. No, no, pass me. Here are your glasses back. Thanks. You're not going in, Vance? No, I have a pair of aces. That doesn't compare with your three fives, Ricky. Huh? Or your straight, Baxter. Hey, what is this? Or even Miss Rice's four kings. Hey, well... Just consider me out of this one, please. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. How did you know what cards we were holding? The cards we're using are a deck known as readers. Hmm? Miss Rice's dark glasses enable the wearer to read the cards from the back. A little mark in the design, visible only when dark glasses are worn, identifies each card. So that's why she always won. She's been rooking us for weeks. Well, wait I a minute, think... boys. If you were only playing for pennies, what's the difference if Miss Rice won? What pennies? Each of those coppers represented a hundred bucks, Vance. This dame won a fortune from us. This is all completely ridiculous. If you'll excuse... Wait a minute, you. You're going to... He's not going to do anything. Not just yet. Neither are you, Baxter. I'm finally getting somewhere on this case. These poker games you've been holding were for big money. That might be the reason Dan Smith was killed. Why should that make a difference? If he found out that Miss Rice was cheating, she might have had to take steps to silence him. Vance, I could kill you. I don't doubt it. Her cute trick almost tagged Ricky and me with a murder app. Vance, do me a favor. Get lost for about five minutes. Just five minutes, that's all I ask you to do. I'm sorry, but I'm staying. This is very unsatisfactory to me, incidentally. It's true I know now that the poker games were for big stakes and that Miss Rice was cheating... But I don't know that... Vance! Oh, hello, Markham. Come in. Hey, what is this, another raid? Vance, we finally identified the dead man, Dan Smith. He was a private detective. He was a, a private, private eye, eh, Markham? Well, apparently he wasn't a very important one, or the fact that he was missing would have been reported before this. He wasn't important. It wasn't particularly legitimate, either. His license was taken away last year. I'm glad you told me about being here at this game so I could come down and bring the news to you. Glad you did, Markham. We now have a lot of information in this case, but... None of it points to our murderer. Perhaps because it's impolite to point. Eh, Van? No, Miss Rice. That isn't the reason. The reason is because the motive for the death of Dan Smith is too complicated. 
There were too many different reasons for somebody to kill that man. This is District Attorney Markham. The Penny Ante murder case opened with the killing of Dan Smith, illegitimate private detective. Milo Vance has discovered that there was cheating going on in a poker game, presumably played for pennies, but actually for bigger stakes. He's also told me about a racket being engaged in by Bill Baxter, one of the suspects, and his aide, Ricky, but has asked me to do nothing about it as yet. All I know for certain is that Vance has detected the third suspect, Jacqueline Rice, cheating through the use of special cards and dark glasses. Both Ricky and Bill have been allowed to return to their places of business unwatched. And no one is quite certain what they're about to do. Ricky, you ain't told me yet how come Philo Vance was up at your place playing cards with us. Well, he wanted to come. Bill, I didn't see no harm in asking him, so I did. You knew he wasn't going to be there before you said you'd come. You told me that, but you didn't tell me why. Don't matter, though. He did us a favor. Found out about that dame cheating, so that washes her up. I ought to wash up this racket, Bill. Time we quit, innit? One more day. We're okay till tomorrow, at least. Guy sends us a buck on Tuesday. He ain't gonna gripe if we don't get his package by Saturday, is he? No. Well, then on Monday, when he starts to get cute, we ain't him anymore. Ah, uh, okay with me. Let's have no more fooling between me and you about who killed Dan Smith. Let's just decide that he... Who could that be? Who knows? But we got no envelopes and no dough in sight, so go let him in. What could we lose? Now, come in! Is this the uh, Rainbow Distributing Company? Well, now, uh... Now come on in, friend. What could we do to help you? How do you do? Uh, my name is Joseph Peters. I, I sent you a dollar on Tuesday, and I got no package, so I thought I'd come up here and just pick it up. Save you the trouble, you know. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Peters, you see, your package must be out in the truck right now. Oh, but it can't be. I, I asked downstairs and in the neighborhood, and they say you have no trucks, so... Well, I'll just take my package and go, if you don't mind. Hey, Bill? I'll handle this. Mr. Peters, there must be some mistake. Here's your dollar, and we're sorry oh, we... Oh, I don't want my dollar. I want my package. You said you had a package for me. I got a card to prove it. Now, give me my package. Well, give it to me, or I'll go to the police. Oh, the police, is it? We can't have you doing that, can we, Ricky? Hey, don't... Bill, you nuts. Put that gun away. Shut up. Shut up, both of you. I won't. Help! Help! Somebody, Help! <laughs> help! Bill, you've killed him. No kidding. What did you want me to do? Let him go blab to the cops? Come on. Help me carry his body to the next room. This made up my mind for me. We're out of this business, Ricky, because of this guy. But him, he's out of this world. You're, uh... Sure I can't get you anything, Mr. Vance? Thank you, Miss Rice. No, I just dropped in to find out one bit of information. Why did you cheat in those poker games? How did you know I was cheating, unless you guessed it? I didn't guess, believe me. I knew when I asked Ricky to arrange the game that you had been cheating. I suspected you used the dark glasses, but I wanted to be sure. You still haven't told me how you knew. That's correct. And you haven't told me why you cheated. Why? Yes. Because everybody was cheating in those games, Vance. It was a battle of wits. Dan Smith, the dead man, was stacking the cards every time he dealt. Bill Baxter knew every card everybody held, although I don't know how he knew. Ricky had a gimmick of his own going. Well, I've told you what you want to know. Now, tell me. How I knew you were reading the backs of the cards? Well. I don't know who's at the door, but whoever it is better go away. I have no intention of answering the buzzer. That could be very complimentary. It is. You going to do anything about it? Yes. Good. I'm going to answer the door. What? Please excuse me, Miss Rice. It's possible it's my secretary or Markham. I left word where I was going. Ricky. Hey, Vance. I gotta see you. Come out here in the hall. Who is it? Somebody for me, Miss Rice. I'll be right back in. Hey, Vance. We got no time to fool around now. Baxter's killed another guy. We're not sure yet that he killed Dan Smith. This time I'm not fooling Vance. He killed Smith. I saw him do it. I was afraid to tell you before, but this is a McCoy. And he knocked off an honest citizen in our office just an hour ago. The cops will find the body and trace it to us. Only I had nothing to do with it. I came to tell you that. Mm, sounds like you're on the level. 
Thanks, Ricky. You be where I can reach you. Is Baxter still in the office? Yeah. He thinks I went out to get a car. He's waiting for me to get back so we can get rid of the body. Very well. I'll get Markham and go up there. And if we find this honest citizen dead, we'll have Baxter dead to rights. <laughs> reason to knock, Markham. Let's break right in. We know Baxter's inside. Just as you say, Vance. This door shouldn't give us much trouble. There we go. One, two, now! Well, Vance and the district attorney. Yes. This is out of a movie, isn't it? Busting in on a guy like this? All right, Baxter, where's the body? Where's what body? The body of the man you killed. We know all about him. His name is Peters. He came here looking for a package you pretended to be holding for him, and you killed him. Peter? Put down your eyebrows, Baxter. We know all about him. Oh, in that case, wait a minute. Uh, Peters? Vance, what is this? I don't know. You call me, Mr. Baxter? What is it? Uh, Peters, tell these guys who you are. Well, my name is Peters, Joe Peters. How do we know that? Well, I work in a plant, and I carry my picture for identification. Here it is, if you want to look at it. Let me see that. Yeah, Certainly. Mm. Markham, I'm afraid we've made a mistake. You're not kidding. Goodbye, gentlemen. Uh, don't bother shutting the door in back of you. You knocked it off the hinges. Goodbye, Baxter. But believe me, we'll meet again. Come on, Markham. You know, Vance, it's the first time I've ever known you. Can I, can I go now? In a minute. Hmm. So, just as I suspected, my friend Ricky went to Vance... Good thing I didn't kill you when I hit you with that gun block. Look, I won't tell anybody what happened, Mr. Baxter. Honest, I won't. You've been okay, Peters. Did like I told you when I thought it was the D.A. and Vance coming here. Go ahead now, scram. Only keep that mouth of yours shut. And remember that. I'll, I'll be quiet, I, I promise you. I won't tell a soul what happened. Go ahead, get lost. Goodbye already. <laughs> Well, Vance, looks like you and I are in the blank wall department as far as the penny ante murder case is concerned. I wouldn't say that. We have uncovered a racket, thanks to our friend Ricky, and we can crack down on that any time we like. What about Dan Smith's murderer? Markham, you have the file on Smith there. Let me see it a minute. Here you are. Mm. Well, see anything? Perhaps. There's a record of the phone calls he made the day he was killed. The operator in his hotel supplied you with them, and of course you checked all of them. The police did. The out-of-town call was to a newspaper. That could be for almost anything. The other calls were to his laundry and to Miss Rice, Bill Baxter, and Ricky. The times these calls were made are here, Markham. Yes. Has that any importance? Miss Rice in the morning, the laundry after that, then Baxter, then the out-of-town newspaper, and then Ricky. That could be important. How so? I'll let you know as soon as I call the out-of-town newspaper, after which you and I are going to see Mr. Baxter, I'm very sure. Again? Yes, but you will wait outside, and the way I talk and the way I'll be dressed... I don't believe he'll know me when I knock. Yeah, who is it? Come on in, the door's open. Mr. Baxter, Mr. Bill Baxter. Who are you? What do you want? Name won't mean anything to you, Mr. Baxter. I got a letter here that says for you to deliver a package to me. I was on my way to the barber's have this mustache shaved off when a fella give me a buck to take it up here. Give me this card you sent him. Here's a card. Here's a buck. Let's have a package. Oh, uh, uh, somebody sent you, huh? Well, come back tomorrow, old-timer. We're closed for the day. Sorry, I can't. Now, come on, son. Let's not fool around. Let's have the package. I ain't moving out of here, neither are you, till I get it either. Mm, well, in that case, I better get you this. Oh! You're not that cute, Vance. I recognize you. Well, you're going to finish this. You're going to lie on that floor all night. I'm going to finish it if I ever get up. You're not getting up one good kick and you'll... <laughs> Never kick a man when he's down and can grab your leg, Baxter. Now let's have some of that fun you started. <laughs> you're awful tough, Vance. Smart, too. I know who killed Dan Smith. You know why, too? Certainly. Oh, Baxter, this is... Oh. That did it. Come on in, Markham. Right. Thanks for letting me have all this fun alone. Nice job, Vance. I heard him talk, and that's all I had to know. So, this is our murder, eh? Neither Bill nor I said that, Markham. But you practically said it, Vance. You told him you knew who killed the private detective, after which he tried to beat your brains out. That was to keep me from exposing his racket here, Markham. I know who killed Dan Smith, and it wasn't Bill Baxter. <laughs> Sit 
Sit here, please, Miss Rice. Vance will be in in a minute. Thank you, Mr. Markham. You over there, Ricky. Vance wanted to see you, too. Okay, so I'm here. What goes? Good evening, everyone. Hello, Hi, Vance. Mr. Vance. Well, here are the two of them as you requested, Vance. Thank you. I am not going to waste much time. I've just received this telegram from an out-of-town newspaper. I'd like to read it. All right, so read it. Well, thank you for your permission, Ricky. It goes like this. Answering your phone call, the Chronicle did receive a telephone call from your city the day the private detective Dan Smith was murdered there. Oh? Relax, Miss Rice. This is practically painless. The telegram continues, Smith wanted to know details and description of local killer who fled town after a murder two years ago. We read them to him on the phone. They are as follows. And then the description. Describes you very definitely, Ricky. Me? Of course you. Dan Smith in some way found out who you were. Wasn't sure. Wired your hometown paper for details. When he got them, he called you, probably to blackmail you. Why, you're, you're crazy! The phone records from Smith's hotel show he called out of town and then Ricky immediately after that. It all fits. Ricky saw his chance to kill Smith at the poker game to shut him up. And Why, blame Bill Baxter by pretending to be on our side later. No, wait a minute. Only it didn't work. Take him out, Markham. No, you won't. Try you won't do anything. Come on. Uh, need won't. any help, Markham? I think not. I'll take, take him down. Let's go, Ricky. Let's go. See you two later. Out you go, Ricky. Well, I suppose I could have you arrested, Miss Rice, but honestly, I don't know what for. Cheating in the card game, Vance? Well, as you told me a while back, everybody was cheating. Baxter wore tinted contact lenses, invisible eyeglasses that enabled him to read the backs of the cards, too. You want to tell me now how you knew I could read the cards? All right. You announced when you went to Markham's office immediately after the murder that you held a straight flush, which was better than the three aces the dead man was holding. His cards were face down, so... So you knew I must have known what they were while he was alive. <laughs> very stupid of me, wasn't it? Yes. But you were very interested in trying to prove to Markham that you had no reason to kill Dan Smith. That altered your usual good judgment. Sometimes I wonder how good my judgment is. And uh, how I'll wind up. I can't tell you that. All I can tell you is that this is the wind-up of the Penny Ante murder case. Welcome back. Well, apparently this card game was like the murder on the Orient Express of card cheating, where everyone was doing it. I wondered about that when Vance said that the cards were readers, since there was no indication that it was her deck. And therefore, the other people had uh, used a, a cheating deck, which kind of makes her puzzlement about it odd because, you know, if you see that somebody else is using uh, cards that can be read, then you kind of figure they didn't do that for your benefit. Also, the whole fraud scheme with the postcards, 50% seems like a really high rate that he was expecting to fall for this scheme. But then again, this is the Philo Vance universe. Also, it's kind of dumb to use your own address as opposed to a P.O. box, so your only options are trying to fake people out or physical violence. Also, appreciated that Markham apparently can handle making arrests. I mean, if he is going to 
act like he's on the police force, he might as well physically restrain suspects as well and handcuff them, do all that good stuff, get all the bang for his buck until some voters get tired of him not actually doing all the stuff you're supposed to do as district attorney. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Michael, Patreon supporter since October 2021, currently supporting the show at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Michael. And that will do it for today. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Follow Vance, but join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... Johnny Dollar. Long distance operator, Wilmington, Delaware is calling you. Okay. Go ahead, please. Johnny? I do. Well, this is Don Freed. What's happening there? Your expenses are running away up and we haven't gotten a report from you. I've been too busy. What's that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that the tip I got was good and it was bad. Yes, Gloria Tierney, 1231 East 57th Street, had a mink coat that was stolen from the Todd estate. No, she didn't tell me much about it because she got herself shot down in the street last night. Yes, I'm working with the police here trying to find out how she comes by the coat. But what I want Listen, to... an hour ago I went out to see an ex-husband of hers. His name's Bill Powers and he seems to be the bird we're looking for. You know what he did? He cried and blubbered all the way down to the morgue. And he's in there right now making a positive identification. I don't blame him for crying. So what's new with you, Mr. Expense Account? Boy, you're a real man-eater today, aren't you? I sure am. Bye. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives from Boise, Idaho, This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.